What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? Diva Trucker. <laughs> Diva Trucker in the building. It's been a minute. It has. I know. I'm so sorry. Nah, nah, nah. It it's, has been a minute. Nah, it's, uh, it's real good. It's real cool. You know, you got you out there doing your thing, driving every day. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, you don't need to be yeah. you don't need to be concentrating and all like that. You need to be concentrating on that money. I tell you, that's hard out here, man. Yeah, it is. These rates is crazy. Yeah, I, I I hear you, man. I hear you. Now, Diva, you 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 still uh -huh. you still driving for Road Legends, right? That's correct. Yep. Now let me ask still you. Still driving for them. Now let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. Let me ask you a question. Um, have you have you heard of a company out of a Chicago called Super Eagle? Oh, I have. I heard major, major horror stories. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So now you know Super Eagle. I I, I believe their company slash leasing look like their their lease side they are. gets gets the most negative play out of their out of their company side but you're at least you're at least driver or you leased on or you're at least driver with road legend i'm lease purchase okay lease purchase i'm i'm buying a truck for them um i have exactly i believe 46 payments my truck will be paid within the next year all right. I had a three-year lease. Mm -hmm. I purchased a 2019. I got the truck in 2020. Mm -hmm. It was a 2019 mm -hmm. T680 with like uh, 200 and I think 60,000 miles on it. Okay. And okay. currently I have 515,000. So I had a three-year payment plan. Mm -hmm. They take out uh, a payment every week. Right. And I'm down to my last 46 weeks. Mm. All right, congratulations, man! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Congratulations. So okay, I'm not even saying one year. I'm I'm counting weeks. <laughs> all right, so, so that's Road Legends. I I if if you guys don't know about Road Legends, I I think I did an MTC on them, and me and uh, Diva talked uh, in our previous uh -huh. conversation. So definitely check that out. But Diva, what 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 is the difference from what you have heard? You because you just said you heard a whole lot of horror stories. We don't hear we don't hear that many horror stories with road legends though. So what's what's the difference between no, the two and companies? I'm gonna, I, I, I'm I'm gonna say with my company, I've been with them two years now, a little over two years. Mm -hmm. I've only came across. One driver that had something negative to say, mm -hmm. but it, it was more his fault than it was the company's fault. Because when, when you, as an owner, operator, truck driver, or at least you're in here to make money. And if you ain't willing to put in the work, you ain't making no money. And if you late on shit you, and not getting, you know, your own time leads and you know, you, you're not being cost productive, meaning you're trying to maximize your dollar and save where you can save. You're not going to make no money. Mm. I had one driver that said he, he chose to quit. He was an owner operated with his own truck. Um, and he didn't have anything negative to say really bad about the company, except for that he felt like they was taking too long to find him loads. And, right. Or he felt like he wasn't making the amount of money that he, he, he really wanted to make. Um, and that was taking too long, you know? So I think he only stuck around for like two months and then quit. But he was, an um, owner, but he was an owner operator though. I mean, he, he already had right, his, with truck. his own truck. Right. Right. And, and, and our company is on, strictly owner operator and lease purchase. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I do know they have an option, which is seldom, where if you didn't want to purchase the truck, you could you could just lease it and and run as an owner operator and just pay the lease fee mm -hmm. without the ownership. But I mean, why do that? Why 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 do that and just be paying for a truck if you're not going to pay for it to own it outright? That's like that's that's like so, the other that's like the other control. You're just renting. 
Right. That's like the other controversies right. of of leasing is just renting the truck. Like you, you, I, I, I talked about this at length. You're paying uh -huh. to work for that company. Why are you doing that? Right. Exactly. And, and so our company really does not do that, but I have seen them offer that option uh, to help someone out or whatever. No, nah, we're, we're good you on know. that option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, that's not something they really, because they, they want you to get the truck. Now, I'm going to say, since you, you said the word culture, um, the difference between our two com our company, and I'm going to say Super Ego, one, we're a family environment. Our, our, our company looks to have you succeed. They want you to succeed. They don't want to have you know, bring a truck back and say, I can't make it. Because to them, that's, that's, that's lost on them. So the better you do, the, the more successful you are, the more successful the company is. So, and they're trying to make sure that they're putting themselves in the best possible light to continue to con uh, you know, attract good drivers. They, they're very select, very, very, very selective about who they bring in. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a high turnover company. Mm -hmm. Most drivers have been with this company, have been with them for a very long time. Even after their trucks are paid off, the drivers continue to stay there. All right. That's um, what's up. Our, right. Our company, to me, offers the one thing that sets them apart from any other leasing company is the type of maintenance package that they have. As long as your truck is under uh, lease, under contract, they pay for all the repairs. Mm -hmm. You pay a deductible. So it's kind of like health insurance. You know, you, you pay your weekly $150 premium, mm -hmm. and then when your truck goes into the shop for repairs, whatever items are being repaired, you pay a $100 uh, deductible on that item. Mm -hmm. So if you went into the shop and you needed X, Y, Z or whatever, like uh, I was just in the shop just recently and my uh, dust system went to, to, to hell and back. Um, I had to have the EGR clean, a new dust pump, mm -hmm. um, some, something other else. So I paid a hundred dollar deductible for the EGR, a hundred dollar deductible for the dust and a hundred dollars. So, the bill came to almost three thousand dollars out of three thousand dollars that I only coughed up. I'm gonna just say three hundred. Mm. Uh, a year, a year and a half ago, I had to have my engine completely, completely rebuilt, including to install a brand new transmission, uh, mainly some manufacturer warranty defects and stuff like that. Uh, total repairs between the engine and the trans came to $37,000. Mm -hmm. Out of that, my deductible was like 500 All right. So I me... would gladly pay 500 instead of paying 30000 something dollars. You know what I'm saying? Okay. There's been, well, for one, let me establish something. I, I am one of the few drivers that self dispatch. I had to kind of, I'm going to say, kind of earn that right and prove that right because I came into them with my own motor carrier status. You know, um, I, I needed a truck and I chose to go to lease purchase because I couldn't afford to just go buy one out on the market anymore, especially after the divorce and losing the first truck. So um, I had to show them, hey, I know what I'm doing. And I could probably make moves faster than what you guys can make. And they still occasionally, if I need help, will dispatch me a load or say, hey, we got something. Can you help us with this or whatever? I'm, I'm, just, that's a, I'm just clarifying that up. But when they were dispatching me, if I ended up in an area that's shitty and, you know, everything is just bad, you're not making no money, sometimes you got to take a shitty load to move about. You know, you, you got, I, I'm on my way to Florida right now on a great paying low. And I know coming out of there, it's going to probably look shitty. Maybe $900 from here to Louisiana or 900 from, from wherever in Florida to Atlanta, you know, so, somewhere that you can put yourself in a better position or you go deadhead, you know, your two, 300 miles that you got to, to get relocate to a different area. 
sometimes you have to take the good with the bad. Now, sometimes you'll turn down a low. I, I've turned down some like, nah, I'll wait, I'll wait and see if something better comes up later in the day or the very next day. And usually it does. But if it does not, or if you're in an area that you know, even because people who book low, you can look at the low board and say, okay, well, today everything looks bad. And I can see that tomorrow forecast is going to look just as bad. Let me just go take this um, low just to get somewhere, you know, even if it's for $500 and you only getting 50 cents a mile or a hundred dollars a mile. I mean, $1 per mile. Sometimes you got to do that just to move to get somewhere better. So if you're continuously from Friday through Monday refusing all loads, that's on you as a driver. Mm. Because you can get loads out of California. Sometimes you just have to move around. Mm. But if you're just refusing, 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 because, yeah, it's only just covering the cost of fuel and basically you're working for free. I mean, that's, that's the nature of the beast. Mm. It's just like in a restaurant, you know, you fix somebody a dinner and they complain, they complain, but to make the customer happy, okay, well, your meal's on the house, you know, whatever. You didn't gave them a free meal. Sometimes you just got to take it on the chin like that so that you can get to the next best thing because the next customer come in might order even more, more. And then, so you made a bigger, you know, profit off the next person. Do you think, do, do you think, uh, that could be. Um, like driver misunderstanding or the lack of understanding the 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 type of business that you that you running for for controversial Super Eagle. Some of it is, and then I'm gonna say some of it is generational. This, this these new drivers mm. and this new day and age. Well, yeah, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, let me stop you. She's she's not new. Mm -hmm. Let's let's just clarify that. She she been in the bit. She she been driving for about a good minute. I I, I want to say about four or five years. So she's not well, new. I'm still gonna say that. But new. go but go ahead and continue. Go ahead and continue. Continue. Yeah. Because so you know I've been driving ten and a half years. My first three, four years was strictly, you know, company driver. I bounced around a little bit, but for each place that I bounced to, I bounced to um, better pay, better understanding. You have to learn the nature. You have to learn this business. If you're going to be an owner operator, some people are fortunate enough. They got good people guiding them. You know, they can jump in right away. I always tell you, if you, Jumping into owner operating within the first year or two, you set yourself up for some failures. Mm. Um, it, it really takes you a good three years to learn this business in and out. Because um, the first two years, is, I, I always say, is mastering the driving skill itself. Right. Facts. You know, Facts. Each, there's so many different variables that you can end up in trucking. So you have to be able to mass. It ain't just flat land, mountains, traffic. It's all kind of docking situations, different type of deliveries, loads. I mean, like I said, I've been in this game 10 years, and at least once a month, I get something unusual that I ain't. I'm like, wow, I done learned something new. It, 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 if you're in here and you feel like you can't never learn something new, then you're in the wrong industry because trucking will break you, make you, and teach you a whole lot each situation. So your first few years should be learning and mastering. Then you start, you know, really researching and getting into the game, whether you're going to come in as an owner operator, or lease purchase or whatever. And like, for me, I spent a lot of my time learning from, I didn't want to talk to nobody young. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn from the older gentlemen. You know, you go in a truck stop, Sit around the table with all the truckers. You hear that one trucker brag and oh, I told Dio right, did this, and I right, told Dio did right, that. Right. Then the, oh, I made thirty thousand dollars in, in in a month. Oh, I made thirty thousand dollars in in three weeks. That's the person you don't listen to because mm. they bragging on growth and they ain't talking about net and what they done paid out of pocket and how much they going home with. But that 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 older man or that older woman sitting in the corner with their paper and their books spread out and you see them calculate. Then the people that I talk to. Then the people that I was learning from, 
how do I handle this? How do I prepare for maintenance? How do I build my maintenance fund? Or, you know, what kind of conditions should I be looking for? Or how should I, I quote? You got to know how to quote the lanes and the, and the spot rate, the, the spot market, and how to quote mileage and the distance and, you know. So, you so, soak all of that in and learn all of that. So it, 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 it's like you saying, it goes back to uh, researching it goes back to, mm-hmm. to do your due diligence on the companies that you that you choose to run right. for that you versus, choose to go with. versus listening to uh, social men, uh, social media trendsetters, quote unquote, mm-hmm. trendsetters or somebody mm-hmm. that's somebody that just say, oh, well, super controversial company, super ego is the place to go to because this is how much I'm making there. Oh, oh, okay, okay. That's that's why I'm coming over there. Right. Without doing your due diligence, maybe you would have known uh-huh. that super, you know, controversial company, Super Eagle, was not the company for you. You you probably would have known that right. if you would have did some background checks. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let, okay. Right, let, right. let me interject this right. again. Like I said, the mentality of these new drivers, and I'm a, I'm gonna say the ones that's jumping in here, five years or newer, think I'm supposed to come in and get all of this glorified money, and my, you know, I, I'm supposed to be paid this and this. And don't pay attention. The market rates change. Last month it might be high. This month everything might be low. Next month might even be worse. So you got to know how to roll with the flow. You can't just expect top bucks for every single thing. You know, again, you got to take the, the good and the bad and the in between, and you got to know how to make lemonade with all of it. Mm. Exactly. Well, that's what's up, know. man. That... I know a young lady. I know a young lady who works for Super Ego. She lives in the same town with me. We park our trucks together. Um, she is the fiance to my trainer who trained me when I very first started driving trucks. When I first came out the gate, I came out with FFE back when they used to be over in Bridgeview, Illinois. And I came from Texas up to Chicago to be trained. And did this, they have coupled up. She drives for Super Ego. I'd be like, how the hell you make money? Because you always at home. But she does very well with them. And she only works about four or five days out the week. And she makes good money. So sometimes you can have a company and you see this one person, bad mouth, bad mouth. The next person at that company may not have that experience because everything's going well for them. So it ain't always the company. Everybody that I know say, don't go to Super Ego. But this young lady does well with them. But and it suits her needs. It's what's, a, it's what's good for her because, you know, it, it, it works with a schedule that she's able to work with. They work with her. She does when when they say, "Hey, we need you to go," blah 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 blah, and, and she's doing all right. Now, so I'm I'm gonna say that in Super Eagles' defense, that there's a happy trucker out there driving for them. Man, um, you know, yeah. So <laughs> folks are probably. Yeah. But let let me I ask mean, you. It, let me it, let me, it, let, me like that. let me ask you this before we be, before we get off the subject. Would uh huh. You know, with everything you know about controversial companies, Super Ego, would you give them give them a chance? With no. every with with everything you know about the company, Mm-mm, I wouldn't. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you another company that's like that too, uh, out of Chicago. What, what's they called? MGR. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I heard. looked into them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and. and it sucks. You, you got to look at the company. Some of these, like I say, some lease companies are out there to do nothing but profit off the, the driver that's taking out the lease. And some, like my company, is not like that. You know, these you got these companies, they nickel and dime you for any and every little thing. Oh, you got to pay this. You got to pay this. You got to pay this. You paying, um, you know, $6,000 or more a month. For your lease. Now, that's truck payment, insurance, trailer fees, ELD, you know, uh, toll pass, your pre-pass, 
anything. And then, oh, if you want a passenger, you, you know, you, you got to pay this fee or you got to pay that fee. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I was interested in doing the lease purchase with U.S. Express. Mm-hmm. I'm a prior U.S. Express driver, so I know the system very well. Mm-hmm. I went all the way back home to Dallas. I'm, I'm going to run from Dallas because I know what accounts they got and where the new drivers coming in may not know what I know. I, I know how to make money off the U.S. Express. Mm-hmm. Now, in the process of going through orientation and all of that stuff, now keep in mind, I've got experience as an owner-operator, motor carrier status that I've had to do, uh, you know, because the financial can't afford this new insurance that they're doing, I've had to shut everything down, restructure, reorganize. And sometimes, you know, you got to pull back and reset it a little bit to get back to where you want, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I just need a truck. So the fastest way to get a truck is do the lease purchase. So during orientation, I started, you know, asking questions and noticing a few things and noticing that, hey, they don't want to give you a contract. They didn't want to give you no information up front. Mm. They, they would just show you, um, they show the street check stuff. Mm-hmm. And their example was uh, owner operated with his own truck, making his own fuel routing and not following our suggestions, make this kind of money. Lease purchase operator following all of our instructions and our fuel routing and uh, staying within the speed limit or whatever makes this kind of great money. Mm. Lease purchase driver who does his own thing and don't pay attention to us and goes out of route and drives extra miles might make this kind of little money. So they tried to, you know, promote it like the lease purchase is the way to go, right? And keep in mind, I, I've got some experience, so I'm double checking and double fact, you know, going through analyzing everything. And, you know, they weren't trying talking about maintenance, who's responsible for the maintenance, who's going to pay. And, you know, can you purchase fuel anywhere? Or I know that when they purchase these trucks, they don't like to take them back to the dealership, even though they're under manufacturer warranty. They fix all their trucks in-house, mm-hmm. thus by voiding manufacturer warranty. So now now that they have paid the truck off and they're selling it to you for some sixty-five, seventy-five thousand dollars mm. on a three-year contract, you know, your question is what's left of the manufacturer warranty when repairs come? Do we have to bring them to you? Do we have to take them out shop? Are you paying a portion of the repairs? Because, you know, if you get a used truck and you take it on the road within the first five, six, seven hundred miles, it breaks down. Who's responsible for that payment Mm. to get it fixed, you know? That's what's up. And they were right. I mean, so these are things that, like I said, when you're getting into the business, that research and that knowledge, you know, will reward you in the end if you go in there knowing and, and having knowledge on stuff. So they were a bit upset that I was bringing up these type of questions. That, hey, such and such and such and such. Now, they, in they looking, always, since they refused to give it. They always, want, they, they always want the naive drivers that don't ask Right, the dumb and desperate. Exactly. Right, dumb and desperate is what Old they're looking dumb for. Dumb and desperate. So, That's a good title. Yeah. I, I think and, I should use that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. They looking for that dumb and that's the driver. Dumb and that's desperate hungry. Drivers. That you know, that that need that money right quick and ain't gonna ask no questions. Turn a blind eye. So in analyzing, there are three types of paychecks of they got out. The lease purchase driver following the program one hundred percent to the letter. I noticed that, you know, looking over the the you know settlement, that they had a seat. So. U.S. Express touts, like, all-inclusive, all your insurance permits and everything included, you pay a flat fee of anywhere between four ninety five dollars to six ninety five dollars a week, depending on what year your truck is. So, you know, for a lease driver who's broke looking for money, man, if all I got to do is pay 700 a week, that covers my truck payment, my insurance, and my permits, you know, my plates or whatever, that's great. I can save money. And then... In a fine line that you barely notice, hidden in the area that you wouldn't think it to be in, 
there's a fee that they charge you for mileage. So not only are you paying your weekly lease payment, they're going to charge you for the miles that you're driving. And I caught that. And when I questioned them about it, they chose not to hire me as a lease purchase driver because I, I caught a way that they're getting over on drivers. So for every mile that you drive, they're charging you two cents. All right. You know, diva. Trucker. And I'm like, why pay if, if, oh, well, yeah, yeah, if I'm paying you a lease payment, but you're going to charge me for the miles that I'm driving on top of the lease payment, that's double dipping. Man, diva trucker coming you in know? the building with the knowledge, man. Well, as always, <laughs> ma'am, thank you for uh, thank you for chiming in, calling in, and everything, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really do yeah. appreciate it. Big cheese got it locked. Want you to take me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a